Okay, all good. So welcome, good to see everybody. Lots of familiar faces as well as some unfamiliar. Uh, and I hope you've got the schedule. Uh, and the one thing I didn't get to you was the um, prayers that we're using for the beginning, the morning session. Um, if you, I mean, if you have your own, please do follow them. But what I'll do now is just start off with those um, and we can screen share um, those prayers. And then I'll try uh, before the, you know, sometime during the day, because it needs reformatting a document to make it work properly to get that distributed to everybody but if there's anybody here who's kind of here for the first time or very new to buddhism you know not not really even identifying as a as a buddhist this really is just a way of setting a motivation it's setting a mahayana buddhist motivation for the practice and the and the, and the retreat and uh, you can follow along you can read, you can recite out loud uh, in the space where you are now with me. Um, and the most important thing, if you feel there's things here that you don't understand or are not sure about, just use it as a way of focusing to bring your own highest motivation uh, to the practice and to the engagement with the retreat. So let's begin by starting with the praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. Uh, we'll do this in English, not in Tibetan. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings. To you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings and go for refuge. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan. I prostrate, make offerings and go for refuge. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings and go for refuge. When, O supreme among humans, you were born on this earth, you paced out seven strides, then said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise then, I prostrate. With pure bodies, form supremely pure, Wisdom ocean like a golden mountain. Fame that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the best. Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like spotless moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. Dust free like you, the three worlds are not. Incomparably wise one, to you I prostrate. The savior having great compassion, the founder having all understanding. The field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean. To you, the one gone to thusness, I prostrate. The purity that frees one from attachment. The virtue that frees one from the lower realms. The one path, the sublime pure reality. To the Dharma that pacifies, I prostrate. Those who are liberated and also show the path to liberation. The holy field qualified with realizations. Who are devoted to the moral precepts. To you, the sublime community intending virtue, I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms atoms in all aspects, with supreme faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions, perform only virtuous actions, 
subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual aberration, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble. A dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud. See conditioned things as such. Through these merits may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing. Subdue the foe of faults and be delivered from samsara's ocean, perturbed by the waves of aging, sickness and death. And then a recitation of the heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time the Bhagavan was dwelling on Masavolja's mountain. In Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom he said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharibhati Putra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic. Unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. No visual form, no sound, no odour, no taste. No object of touch and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance and no extinction of ignorance and so on. Up to and including no ageing and death and no extinction of ageing and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Tayata gate gate paragate parasangate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Shradvatiputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, and those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Let me offer the prayer to the lion-faced Dakini, Simhamukha. I prostrate to the gathering of Dakinis in the three chakras, who abide in the holy yoga of using space. By your powers of clairvoyance and magical emanation, look after practitioners like a mother, her child. Aka, Samra, Sashadara, Samra, Yapeyak.
Aka samra sashadala samra yape tayata gati gati paragati parasangati bodhi soha. By the power of the teachings of the three supreme jewels possessing the power of truth, may inner and outer hindrances be transformed. May they be dispelled. May they be pacified. Shintim kuru yesoha. May all negative forces opposed to the Dharma be completely pacified. May the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified. May we be separated from problems and harmful conditions to Dharma. May all enjoyments be in accord with the Dharma. And may there be auspiciousness and perfect happiness here, right now. And then to recall almost like a glance meditation on the lamb rim of the graduated path. Uh, the excellent foundation of all good qualities by Lama Tsongkhapa. The foundation of all good qualities is the kind and perfect pure guru. Correct devotion to him or her is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please best move to rely on him or her with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again. Please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly day and night takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. After death, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of black and white karma follow. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please bless me to always be careful to abandon even the slightest negativities and accomplish all virtuous deeds. Seeing samsaric pleasures as the door to all suffering, they are uncertain and cannot be relied upon. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me to generate the strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Led by this thought, mindfulness, alertness, and great caution arise. The root of the teaching is keeping the Pratimoksha vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so have all mother migratory beings. Please bless me to see this and train in supreme bodhicitta and bear the responsibility of freeing migratory beings. Even if I develop only bodhicitta but don't practice the three types of morality, I will not achieve enlightenment. With my clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the bodhisattva vows with great energy. Once I've pacified distractions to wrong objects and correctly analyzed the meaning of reality, please bless me to generate quickly within my mind stream the unified path of calm abiding and special insight. Having become a pure vessel by training in the general path, please bless me to enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme Vajra vehicle. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is keeping pure vows and samaya. As I have become firmly convinced of this, please bless me to protect these vows and pledges like my life. Then, having realized the importance of the two stages, the essence of the Vajrayana, by practicing with great energy, never giving up the four sessions, please bless me to realize the teachings of the Holy Guru. Like that, may the Gurus who show the noble path and the spiritual friends who practice it have long lives. Please bless me to pacify completely all outer and inner hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing the qualities and stages of paths. May I quickly attain the state of Vajradhara. Then a short uh, mandala offering, which we can do uh, in Tibetan and then English. Saji Puki Shug Jing Meto Tram Ri Rab Ling Ji Ni De Yan Pa Di Sangge Hing Lu Mi Te Ul Wai Ro Ku Nam Da Ying La Chu Pa Yo 
this ground anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and moon. Imagine this as a Buddha field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. Idam Guratna Mandala Kamniyatayami. And then refuge and bodhicitta. Sangi Chodang Soki Chonam La Changchu Badu Dakni Kyapsu Chi Dage Chunyen Gipe Sonam Gi Drola Penchir Sangi Drupa Ju Sangi Chodang Soki Chonam La Changchu Badu Dakni Kyapsu Chi Dage chunyen gi pe sonam gi, trola penchir sangi, drupa jo. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Thank you very much. And in that spirit, we can engage in the beginning of our retreat. I thought it might be nice because you've had introductions from Jenny and Steph and myself. Uh, there are 17 of us. So if, we're, if we don't, you know, sort of make a meal of it, I think it'd be nice just to go around and introduce ourselves to each other. So would Faye like to start? Faye, do you want to unmute yourself and unmute your video? <laughs> Hi, hi everybody. I'm Faye. I'm co-hosting today with Steph. Um, I've not been long uh, associated with Land of Joy, just a couple of years, and um, this is the first time I've ever met Roy and done the teachings. Um, I've probably met quite a few of the participants before. It's nice to see everybody, and I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Um, uh, Amanda, do you want to go next? Uh yeah, I don't know if you can see the um, list of participants, but we could follow down there. So it would be Anne next, yeah. then yeah. Annabelle, and we can go down the list that way. Sure. I'll just say the oh. name, yeah. yeah. Is that me? Anne, yes. Anne, go yeah. ahead, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I live on the south coast of England. Is that relevant? So it's a long way to Land of Joy, but worth the effort. Um, I'm just glad to be here. So thank you very much. Bless okay. you. Thank you, thank you Anne. Annabelle, would you like to go next? I don't seem to be able to unmute. No, you have. You we can hear you. You're fine. You now, Annabelle. Oh, you've muted yourself again, Annabelle. It's not. Okay, you're now unmuted. Right. Are you sure? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, hi everybody, um, Annabelle and I live in Northumberland, um, very close to Land of Joy. Um, I've been on quite a few retreats with Roy, in fact um, he was, his, one of his retreats was the very first one I went on when Land of Joy first opened. So um, I'm very happy to be here today and um, looking forward to having the online experience over the next few days. Thank you. Thanks, Annabelle. Um, Judy, would you like to go next? Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Judy Klimpikun. I live in the southwest in Bath. And um, I've known Roy, or I've been, with, been sitting with Roy fairly recent, recently through the Buddhist Society. And I'm glad to be doing a retreat with him now. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Um, Monica, would you like to go Hi, next? Hi, Monica. Hi, I'm Monica. Thank you so much for having me for this retreat at the last minute. I'm Anne's friend and uh, I'm from India. I'm from Mumbai, India. And this is my first time in the Land of Joy, but I've done other retreats uh, with the FPNT. It's great. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. I'm glad you could be here. Um, uh, Genevieve, because Anne, you've been, haven't you, Anne Norris? Yeah, yeah. So, Genevieve, you need to unmute yourself, Genevieve. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Um, I'm new to Land Design and Volunteer here, and I've been very privileged to be able to luckily get on this course this weekend at Charlton Office. So it's my first time to do this course as well. And I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm very, very grateful and thankful that I have this opportunity. So I'm really looking forward to it, and um, just I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Genevieve. You might want to try and, if you speak again, just to turn your volume up a little bit. No, it's okay. Thank you. Um, Joan? Joan, have we got Joan? Yes. Hi. Hi, my name's Joan. I'm in Scotland. Um, I'm actually a friend of Faye, and uh, she had told me that uh, this retreat was on. I'm happy to be here. It's all very new. But I'm looking forward to the next few days. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Joan. Um, Mervy, Mervy, Mervy. I hope I've said your name yes. correctly. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Mervy, Christina. Hi. Nice to meet you, Roy, and everybody. So I'm uh, I'm from London. Well, originally from Finland, but now I'm in London, and this is my first retreat with Roy. But I do recognize many of the many of the students here. So nice to be you, be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mervy. Yeah. Um, Naori, Naori, sorry, another name I've struggled with. Hello. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. We can. Oh. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Naori, uh, go ahead. Hi, it's Naori. Um, I usually been here. Yeah, I think internet is not really good here. Uh, that's why I'm a bit struggled to join this uh, retreat. I missed the first 10 minutes. Uh, I'm in Japan at the moment, but usually in London. And I've been at uh, Roy's retreat uh, about uh, several times. So I'm really uh, look forward to this retreat, especially for my personal situation at the moment. So yes, thank you. Thanks very much, Nari. Thank you. Lovely to hear you. Welcome from Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and Roxy. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Roxy. Um, I live in Otley, just outside of Leeds. So I would ordinarily go to Jamyang in Leeds. Um, I've never worked uh, with Roy before, so um, yeah, looking forward to this retreat. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Roxy. Thank you, um, Ruth. Ruth. Oh, hello. Um, yes, this is my first retreat with Roy. Um, so looking forward to that. Um, but I've been up to the Land of Joy a few times. Um, on Ben Rabina, one of Ben Rabina's um, courses. And I've also worked in the woods a lot with Pauline and uh, just been up recently and saw Faye, in fact. So looking forward to all of this. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ruth. Thank you. Um, Stuart. Hello, I'm Stuart from Nottingham. Um, I attend uh, events at Jamlang, both in London and in Leeds. Um, I went to, um, Roy's really good course on um, uh, uh, Tantra at the Buddhist Society. Really enjoyed that. So really looking forward to this. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Uh, Tony? Hello, good morning. Um, I've kind of been on a lifelong uh, spiritual pursuit, really, mainly yoga and Vedanta. But um, Annabelle uh, introduced me to Land of Joy last year and um, I attended Roy's retreat on Mahamudra which I found excellent and uh, very beneficial so thank you again for that and I'm looking forward to this retreat. Okay thank you Tony thank you. Um, Zoom user uh, you haven't got your name sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I, I'm Amanda it doesn't oh. normally come up as Zoom user I'm not sure what happened there. Um, yeah, I, I've been to Land of Joy several times. Um, I've done intro to Tantra with Roy Sutherwood. I live on um, in Tessa near the Wirral, and um, Buddhism is very, very important to me. Okay, great. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. And Annette, would you like to put your video on and just introduce yourself? It's nice to see you.
Annette? Sorry, I don't know how to put my video on. <laughs> Just at the bottom of this, at the bottom of the screen, you've got a, 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 a row of icons and the second one along should say stop video and it's probably got oh, a line. Okay. Yeah, mean. Okay, got it, got it. I've just pressed it, but then it's oh, and then it it won't come on. Uh, okay, well, just on. okay. So well, just for now, just yeah. Hi there. yeah I've just hello there. <laughs> I've just joined, so I'm imagining that everyone's just introducing themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm in, still in France at the moment in Lavaux, and um, uh, yeah, this is the first retreat I've done with Roy. So that'll be very nice. And I've been to Land of Joy a few times. I've visited there quite a few times. And sorry about that, I can't figure out the video. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, maybe it'll come a bit later, yeah? Okay. Okay, thanks very much, everyone. Over to, over to you, Roy, thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Um, well, much as we would do if we were actually at Land of Joy, I think it's good to kind of, particularly as we're going to, you know, um, twice a day have an opportunity not only to lit listen to some ideas and do some meditation but also to talk to kind of establish the ground rules for that and also to think a little bit about how it's different when we're each following the retreat in our own space um, it's good in one way because it can be so much more relaxed um, uh, from another point of view it's easier to be uh, fuzzy about your own boundaries and say, oh, well, I will take that call or I will watch that program or whatever else. So whatever you do, however you want to follow the retreat, if you, if you, you know, and I, I would sort of hope and encourage you all to follow it in as authentic a way as possible as a retreat in your own space, coming together twice a day to sort of share a virtual space. Uh, and to think clearly about what your own boundaries are. To, if you were in retreat, you wouldn't be leaving the grounds of Land of Joy, for example, and you'd be following the schedule. So I think you need to decide for yourselves. Obviously, if there's, you may have to go shopping, you may need to get and do certain things. And I think it's worth just noting those down in your mind so you're clear about them. And then make those the kind of boundaries of your own retreat. You know, I will do this, but I won't do that. And the priority is to kind of stay with the retreat. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy if any of you are in doubt to sort of discuss or answer any questions you have. But I think with common sense, you know, it's really relatively easy for each of us to do this for ourselves. But just to be clear at the beginning, what our boundaries are in respect of the retreat. So in respect of the guidelines if, that are relevant, whether we're on or offline, one is that the retreat is an opportunity to be present and to practice presence, yeah? Uh, and in doing that, you can avoid distractions from phones or other devices as much as possible. So, you know, obviously if there's something urgent and it needs to be done, you address it. But by and large, you try to make good judgments about avoiding uh, those distractions. And of course, we, the mind does what it does, and we come and we go. And as, but as much as possible, try to keep coming back to the body, the breath, and the experience of the five senses and mental consciousness, and just be present there. And if you go, come back. If you go, come back. It's a kind of a a little like shamatha in everyday life. So to, to approach things uh, in that way so that we stay present in the space and give our whole selves during the retreat to the retreat as, as much as possible. In respect of when we are talking online, when we have an opportunity to talk to one another, Q&A and all the rest of it, kind of try to approach that as openly and positively as possible you know not to if we're in not in a very good mood looking to derail conversations and try to kind of respect each other um, by uh, listening paying attention and also as much as possible turning up to and leaving sessions 
on time, yeah, and 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 generally accept accepting that agreement to the boundaries you've set for the retreat. Uh, obviously, it goes without saying that at all times, let alone in retreat, but more important that we try to act with honesty and integrity uh, and respect confidentiality. I think that's really, really important. I think much as if I was sitting at Land of Joy, I would be saying, you know, what goes on in the Gompa doesn't go outside the Gompa uh, so that all of us can feel in a safe space to be able to share whatever comes up or to voice our opinions as honestly as possible. Uh, and respect one another in the sense of saying that which we share together will be in confidence between us. So I think that's uh, really uh, quite important. And also to kind of recall in those exchanges, we really do respect different perspectives. Yeah. So Land of Joy, the retreat, myself, we kind of welcome people from all backgrounds and all points of view you know they're not going to be any single right answers to many of the questions that will be raised but all questions and constructive perspectives are really really welcome so don't be frightened thinking oh well i can't say this or i can't see it can say that really feel uh, that you can do this in an environment where other people are going to welcome and respect your different perspectives and as much as possible be supportive and friendly you know sort of the general spirit of the retreat should be one where we treat each other in a supportive and friendly way and there may not be you know the occasion or the or or, or the or the need for that in a way that would be there if we were all together in the same space still when we're sharing the virtual space space there's many kind of uh, aspects of that that still applies so I'd, in, I'd encourage you to do that to be supportive to be friendly and in conversation kind of treat other people in the way we'd like to be treated ourselves and make sure that everyone uh, can have a voice you know this is certainly not a situation where i want to oblige people to speak so if you feel no no i you know i i want to remain within myself that's okay too but I want to feel that everyone has a voice if they want one and to kind of recognize that we can all contribute to each other's learning and that what we get out of the retreat is going to be, you know, directly proportionate to what we put in. And also to have a willingness when we can to share a bit of ourselves, you know, to uh, bring ourselves to uh, and our own unique perspectives to who we are, what we are, and what we're discussing. Is everybody kind of generally happy with those as ground rules for the retreat? And is everybody, are you kind of clear on the idea of, you know, you know your own space and you know where we where you are. We're all in very different locations and our houses and our apartments and rooms are differently constructed. And between now and Tuesday evening, no doubt there are different things in life, depending on how well prepared we've been in arriving here that may have to happen but you can include those within the boundaries of your retreat so that you maintain the retreat but are able to do so in a genuinely relaxed way yeah everybody happy with that or any questions in respect of it okay so everybody's happy with that that's good We'll actually start uh, looking uh, at the subjects of the retreat this afternoon uh, formally, but between now and then there are some meditation sessions. Um, so what I would like to do is kind of establish for the moment the kind of meditation we'll do up until the first analytical meditation, if you like and what we're doing in this and it's largely following um not rigidly but uh, following the themes of a book by his holiness the dalai lama called how to see yourself as you really are uh, translated by jeffrey hopkins it's uh 
it's available very cheaply these days, still in print and lots of good uh, Kindle editions, very, very uh, cheaply indeed. But you won't, you know, if you want to pick one up afterwards, fine. But you don't have to pick it up now because insofar as we're going to use it, I'll either read, you know, or indicate the parts. And then when we finish the retreat, um, I'll send everybody a, a full bibliography of all the material we've covered. Because I kind of advise, it's, yes, by all means, if you want to read, you know, to read gently in, uh, in, in your free periods, it can be very useful, but sort of can also be useful in retreat not to feel that you have to read like mad, you know, that you can just have some time and space for yourself without focusing madly on study, not that I would ever want to discourage study. But in retreat, you can focus on the meditation and focus on the themes of the retreat as we go through. But so if you're thinking, oh, you know, what about that? What about this? What about the other? No, Roy will provide you with a full bibliography that you can enjoy after the retreat uh, in that way. But the, the meditations, because they're um, focused quite a lot on analytical meditation, you know, we're trying to both conceptually and experientially um, get a better look at ourselves and who we really are. So it requires a little analysis. Um, but those of you who are already familiar with uh, ways of working in Buddhist meditation, you'll know that the analysis is not really possible and that unless there's a reasonable kind of ground or context of shamatha or calming meditation. You know, if it becomes too conceptual and there isn't a stable enough base, balance and, and stability of attention, resting in some calm with mind and body settled, then the potential for clear insight or analysis becomes difficult. And if you become too pressured on the analysis, you lose the calm basis. If you become too calm and don't break it in the right way, then it's not possible to proceed with the analysis. So we'll probably begin the first uh, analytical meditation either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. So the sessions between now and that first analytical meditation, it would be really useful if we devoted it to establishing some shamatha. And what I would like to do, the calm abiding meditation, is I'll guide one in this session before we're finished, because uh, where I would like it to go is to start with setting up some uh, shamatha with an object using the body and the breath, and then to drop the breath as an object and rest without an object, but single pointed, unsupported, in open choiceless awareness and then begin to do what is possibly the most subtle form of shamatha and that's to rest in the awareness of awareness itself because that's an excellent basis from which later to begin the analytical part of the retreat so if everybody's happy with that i'll guide a meditation for about 25 30 minutes in that style uh, so that you can get used to the principles of it and see if you can then follow it yourself in your own sessions uh, until this afternoon and subsequently because we'll come back to it and then when we finish the meditation that allows a little bit of time for any questions before you move on to the rest of the day and we meet later on okay so if you find a comfortable posture, so as the sound of the gong fades, just gently bring the attention from wherever it is now to the experience of the five senses, what you can see, what you can hear, 
what you can smell, any residual tastes, and the totality or the ocean of bodily sensations. And just rest there gently. When the attention's distracted, just bring it back to rest simply in an uncomplicated way with the fresh immediacy of the five senses. Just allowing mind and body to settle into the natural state together in union. Just gently bringing the attention back to the experience of the five senses. If it's distracted by any other internal or external stimuli. And as much as possible, just letting everything settle into the natural state. Then gently see if you can broaden the scope of your attention to include mental consciousness. Maybe just an experience of the metaphorical space of the mind, but just check out whatever else you find there. There may be big background emotions, positive, negative, neutral. strings of dialogue, commentary, conversations with oneself, possibly undercurrent thought. Maybe that kind of involuntary processing that goes on, something from earlier in the day, something dreamt overnight or earlier in the week, that's still nagging away, something that needs resolving. Hopes, fears, expectations in the present. Or maybe that processing going away into the future. What happens after this session? What comes next? What do I do tomorrow? Have I got my boundaries struck? Whatever it is, just don't do anything with it. Don't correct it. Don't modify it. Just be aware of what's there. Some deadline, something we're looking forward to, something we're trying to avoid. Maybe mental images, memories, daydreams, reveries, whatever. Just check out, be present to whatever you find in mental consciousness. Moment by moment, right here, right now. Just rest there a bit. And radically simplify your attention, the scope of your attention, and just choose to focus on the totality, the ocean of felt somatic bodily sensations, not blocking anything else out, leaving everything else as it is, but just 
choosing to focus the attention on the immediate freshness of the felt somatic bodily sensations. Not trying to block anything out, not trying to chase after or indulge anything. If one becomes either identified or overwhelmed by one's own experience, just return the attention gently with relaxed awareness. So the felt somatic sensations of the body here and now in this posture. Notice that there are many myriad interdependent, interrelated waves and patterns of constantly moving and changing sensations arising as a result of different causes of conditions in the environment and the body itself. Sensations arising as a result of temperature, the temperature of the room, the core temperature of the body, different temperatures in different parts of the body, different to the core temperature for different reasons. Different sensations arising where the skin is directly exposed to the air and the drafts as opposed to covered with different layers, weights and textures of clothing. Different sensations where the body is in contact with the floor, the mat, the cushion, the chair or some other part of itself as opposed to not much felt as being in contact with anything at all. Different types of sensation. Those sensations different as whether they're felt through the hard, bony, skeletal structure or the soft tissue and musculature. More subtle sensations caused by the working of the vital organs in the body, the pumping of the heart, circulation of the blood. Process of respiration, rise and fall of the lungs, expansion and contraction of the chest. Work of the solar plexus and diaphragm and gentle rise and fall of the abdominal wall. moment by moment. Then narrow the attention again and just focus single pointed, clear, alert, relaxed on the rhythm of the sensations of the breath in the body. Sensations of that tide-like cycle of incoming and outcoming breath. The rhythm of those sensations within the totality of bodily sensations. From the time the breath comes in over the upper lip into the nostrils to the bridge of the nose. Down past the throat into the airways, the expansion and contraction of the lungs and the chest work of the diaphragm, solar plexus, gentle rise and fall of the abdominal wall. See if you can just bring clear, alert, undistracted mindful attention, bring it to rest in the sensations of the rhythm of the breath in the body. And just rest there. If the sensations are dull, brighten your awareness of them on the in-breath. Use the out-breath like a sigh to breathe out anything you may be holding on to mentally, emotionally or physically. And just relax more profoundly into the posture and the practice the presence riding on the rhythm of the sensations of the breath in the body. Just rest there for a while.
Still in your own time, when you feel you've got some attentional balance and stability, anchoring and returning the attention to the sensations of the breath in the body, just let go of the sensations of the breath as an anchor but leave everything else the same. Just resting in single pointed, undistracted, mindful concentration in completely open, unsupported, choiceless awareness. alert but open to any experience that arises within the sphere of the five senses or mental consciousness. Still in body, speech and mind with the senses vividly alive. Just resting there in unsupported, single pointed, choiceless awareness.
and bring the focus within. Invert the attention upon itself. Be aware of the experiencer rather than the experience, the meditator rather than the meditated upon. Just rest clear, single pointed, undistracted in the awareness of awareness itself. And just rest there with nothing more to do.
And when you hear the sound of the gong strike, just let go completely. Don't try to meditate or not meditate. Just relax and be with whatever experience you have. Okay, we've got a little bit of <clears throat> time until 11.30 for any questions, any questions about the practice or about the ground rules or about where we're going, whatever. Um, but between now and uh, meeting again at three, um, be good to use your meditation sessions, maybe in sessions not more than you know, 25, 30 minutes max, don't stretch it, find your own uh, pace with that. See if you can allow things to settle down and generate a little shamatha, starting with shamatha on some object, then unsupported and then just resting in awareness. That'll set us up nicely for thinking, talking and analysing. Judy, would you like to ask a question and unmute yourself? Um, <clears throat> I do find in this shamatha meditation that um, I can keep the calm abiding until you say, invert the attention on yourself as the meditator. Yeah. And then I start going into analytical meditation. Yeah, well, best at this stage not to do any analysis there. It's, it's more like um, an experiential shift rather than thinking, oh, what is it or where is it? It's just if you get to the point where you're resting unsupported, yeah, so you, you, you let go of the breath as an object, everything else is staying the same. So there's almost a bit like being a sentry. There's just single pointed, undistracted attention. If it tends to go anywhere to something internal or maybe something external, you just notice it and gently bring it back. If it becomes fuzzy and difficult or disorientating, go back to the breath. Use the breath as an anchor and then drop it. And then when you can rest just unsupported, single pointed, you're happy with the rhythm of bringing the distracted attention back, you'll find that it distracts slightly less and less as you relax more profoundly into the posture and the practice. Then it's it's about you you will there's a kind of noticing that your awareness of the sight, the sound, the smell, the taste, and the bodily sensations has a slight sense of you being in here looking at that out there or experiencing that out there. It's kind of outwardly directed. And all you need to do is kind of flip that come at, come back into who's having this experience but not in an analytical way there, there's a difference now you know i'm i'm looking at you i'm talking to you i can see your thing in the screen and i'm out there but i can come back to the sound of my own voice my own aliveness it's it's like a move within and just rest there so I'm still aware of what's going on out there, but the center of gravity is now in my awareness of what's happening rather than completely out. Is that making sense? But this, I say it's an experiential shift. It's more like, um, you know, bike riding or learning a sport rather than thinking about it. 
is just bringing the attention back in, you know, and, and not doing it this way, but more um, uh, this sort of way, yeah? It's like we're coming within, contracting. So you're leaving everything else as it is, but your the placing of your attention is in the direction of who is having the experience. But with the with some insight meditation later on to be doing analytical work on just who or what that is or may be, is or isn't, is where we're going to go. But initially, right now, all I want to do is to get the attention rested there, embedded in that awareness of awareness without worrying about any analytical or conceptual considerations. I mean, if they pop up, if there's something, because some of us are quite curious, aren't we? So we go there and then we, we do actually go there physically, but there's something going on mentally that says, what is this? Who am I? And all the rest of it. That's fine. Just let it go on. But just treat it like mental steam. <laughs> keep, keep focused in that experience, the, the, you know, the direct experience of your own awareness, sitting completely open to whatever experience arises in either the five senses or mental consciousness. Is that helpful? Yes. I like the idea of the mental steam. Yeah. It's <laughs> like that. sometimes there's, oh, yes, yeah, so I'm not supposed to follow it, so should I push it away? No, just leave it there like the clouds, you know, whatever's coming and going comes and goes. You're just aware of it and remaining with that which is aware. Yeah. Thanks, Judy. Um, Ruth, would you like to um, unmute yourself and lower your hand and ask your question? Oh, yes, uh, Roy, um, my question is, um, ultimately, is it possible to gain that state of mind whilst having a conversation, whilst talking yourself and being engaged? or is it inevitable you come out of that state of mind? Um, no, it is, it is possible, but um, you need uh, quite a highly developed uh, capacity or ability, call it what you will, um, for attentional stability and balance. Yeah, to, and in, in the midst of life, or in the midst of a conversation or doing anything in motion to go from zero to there can be quite hard you know it's a bit like learning to ride a bike you get on and you fall off you get on and you fall off and then you think oh maybe a better idea to learn to ride the bike in a specific session you know in a, a flat ground maybe a bit soft you know we do all those things before we go on the road so Yes, the, the, the whole idea of training in, 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 in meditation in formal sessions is, of course, supposed to be informing and going for a goal of st a deepening stability and balance of attention 24-7 in the post-session meditation session as well. But you need, a, and not to say that at any time, don't not have a go. I mean, if one can, in a relaxed and alert way, you know, rest, attentive, well-balanced, stable, go for it, but recognize that, you know, moment by moment in movement, if we're not well-trained over a long period of time, you, it'll go, it'll come and go, it'll come and go, it'll come and go. But, but yes, that's that would be the place to be if we could, and that's part of what the training of the attention is about in that respect. Is that helpful? And yes, the, I, I think well, that... Um, the more I, you're I able to cultivate it in, in a formal practice, the easier it will be to take it out into ordinary life post a formal meditation session. Sorry, I... Yes. No, no, I, I think that if I were a, attempting to be that present in company, I just have a tendency to go very quiet 
because otherwise you completely forget about maintaining that attention as soon as you start talking and um, being involved in one. I think that would um, most likely be my experience if I were trying to focus on that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I think mm. it would be the right way to go at the beginning to say, well, it, again, you know, sort of going at full speed might be really, really difficult. But if you if you try and then you notice, oh, um, I'm a bit more cautious, I'm a bit quieter, you know, I'm not quite so uh, high energy in, in that mm. situation. That's okay as long as you kind of then feel that a bit and think, am I trying to freeze something? Am I holding it too tight? And then try and let go around that a bit, but still be there, be present with a, a little bit of alertness, but recognize that it's fluid and can't be frozen. You try to freeze it, you get too uptight around it and you get upset when you, oh, I've missed it and I've lost it and all of that, where it's more a kind of a <sighs> opening up into it like that. And if it comes, it comes. If it goes, it goes. Don't worry about it. Mm. But just at the, in the background, it's, oh, I, it, I've become distracted. Gently bring it back. Gently bring it back but not holding on too tight. And yeah, you can then, and you'll find that the, the more you develop deeper and more prolonged levels of attentional stability and balance within the formal practice, the easier doing that in the, in the, in the everyday situation will be. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much, Ruth. Um, Roxy, I think your hand went there just a, a tad before Tony's. <laughs> um, yeah, um, not often, but sometimes when I'm meditating in this form, I find myself becoming quite blissful and the fear then uh, comes up around whether to relax more into that. Uh, I sort of get excited, but fearful at the same time time and while this is going on is there is mind chatter but uh you know i'm kind of aware of that but not letting it overtake but there's just an ecstatic feeling but i i fear going any further with it i think the it's a it's a very fortunate insight that i think you'll find backed up by the texts the sutras, the shastras, and the commentaries of practitioners uh, right back to the time of the Buddha. Uh, you find it even in the Pali Canon, the Bhavanga, the Shining Mind. The, the, it's, it's an experience that the natural state of the mind is blissful. I, I think there's some translations from the Pali that would make it the beautiful mind, the shining mind. So it's very fortunate to be able to relax back and experience that. Many people are like, what are you talking about? But yes, there's a, there's a very basic kind of natural sense of well-being and bliss in the mind's natural state. And you're right to think, oh, when we're there or we experience it, there's either a wanting to grab hold of it and not let go, or there's a fear that it might go away. What you've got to try and do is say, so what? I don't care. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. Yeah. Just keep following the instructions. You know what I mean? Just rest there. If it becomes intensely blissful, be present with the bliss. If it disappears, don't try to hang on to it. If it comes back, don't go, oh, everything else is crap compared to this. <laughs> Whatever comes up is fine. And, and recognize, you know, the, the fortunacy of having that experience and that insight 
for a moment or for however long that you were free enough from all the other habitual traffic and mental dross to experience the natural blissful state of the mind. Yeah. So it's a wonderful experience to have, but it comes, it goes. Or should we say, we come, we go, you know, because mm. we're all over the place. The mind's doing all this. And then everyone goes, oh, this is really good. All right. Oh, no. Thank you. I'd just like to share another observation, and I, I feel this is a value of the Sangha. I feel that if anybody else in this group has had that experience, it makes it more available for others to experience that. That's just what I feel. Um, so that's why I'm having moments of bliss in this beautiful group retreat, but maybe on my own, not so much, you know, no. sometimes, but not always. That's wonderful too. Thank you for sharing that. No problem. Really good. <laughs> Thank you, Roxy. Tony, would you like to ask your question? Yes, thanks. Um, yeah, pretty much as soon as I turn my awareness on my awareness, sort of when I get to that stage, uh, and this is quite a common experience when I'm on my own as well, meditating, I get a lot of bodily twitching happening. Uh, it's quite strong. Uh, it's hard to ignore. I mean, I do just try to pretty much do what you've just explained to Roxy you know, just carry on with the instructions. But do you have any particular observations or advice around that? Um, um, in, involuntary bodily movements occurring in meditation, again, if you, if you can relax around it and just allow it to happen, don't try to block it, don't try to stop it. And again, kind of just, if it occurs, so sometimes there's something in us that thinks, oh, that's a bit strange. And, uh, and you, you want to rein it in or stop it or, you know, try and let go around that and just allow it to happen. Be aware of it, but don't pay too much attention to it. You know, it's just an it's just another meditative experience in in, in Tibetan. They would call it nyam things that happen in meditation you know they're they're meditative experiences so it's just another yam so don't try and stop it don't feel the don't feel there's something to fix just relax back and open up so whatever you be prepared to open up to whatever whatever occurs yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I think I think probably in my mind there's a little bit of because of my yogic background there's sort of an association of always the kundalini energy sort of manifesting in a, in a sort of minor way, yeah. and that that's a little bit of a trap. I think so. I, I think your advice is very good there. Yeah. Just... Very much so. Whatever whatever the it's interesting. It's like you 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 may be whether it's you know bliss or whatever, you're sitting, and some experience comes up, be it physical, emotional, mental, or whatever else. Yeah, the conceptual machinery will go into overdrive trying to say, oh, it's this or, oh, it's that. OK, just watch that, too. That's fine. You know, it's very interesting that when these experiences occur, some joker wants to come up and offer a commentary. That's fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, you know, it's just that's another phenomena that wants to comment on something else that's going on. And if you identify with that or kind of grab onto it, then you're lost in that. Whereas you, you want to remain single pointed, clear, resting in the awareness of whatever's happening. And that it, sometimes those ones for me, because probably, you know, all of us have different, uh, we're slightly differently disposed, so may have different obscurations and difficulties, but sometimes for me, one of the biggest problems with dedicated sitting is boredom. <clears throat> but if I have this perspective, if I can be there, present, and some experience occurs, and then up runs the commentary, you know, it's better than sitcom. Look at them go, you know, wow. <laughs> wow, you know, so it's, where's all that come from? And then all the emotions associated with the thoughts. And, then is it right? Is it wrong? Is it Kundalini? Is it this? Is it, oh, that's interesting. Why did, where did this nest of birds come from? You know, 
But oh, then I'm questioning, wondering about where they come from. Let's just go back to being there. And whatever happens is okay. Don't have to hold on to it. Don't have to indulge it. Don't have to reject it. Don't have to accept it. Just be there. And watch the fun. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Okay, Roy, we're sort of a little bit over time, so I don't know if you want to take any more questions or... I'm, unless there's, anyone's got any burning ones, I'm quite happy to finish, come back at three o'clock and wish you all the best with getting some shanty and some calm and a good base of calm abiding before we start again at three. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, you very, thank you very much, Roy. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you. See you later. Enjoy. <laughs>